This video is going to show you how to uh, create and style tables in HTML. So tables are for um, tabular data. They're not for design. They are for, they used to be for design, but they are for presenting information. And in our case, in this class, we will be using them to set up forms, like a contact form. So um, in the old days, yes, you would use tables. That's how you would lay everything out. And a table is nothing more than a bunch of columns and rows. Uh, the way that they were really intended to be used is, as I um, described a moment ago, just for tabular data. So information, you'd have little headers, and you'd have columns of information, like um, a sports team a score. A card kind of thing or a TV schedule or um, you know maybe materials on one side and the resources on the other side you know like two columns um, so it's supposed to just be for information not to position everything on a page that's why we do floating and positioning and we use divs and we use CSS now so um, tables though are, are used for forms they are used heavily in uh, email marketing still for layout because of the way that they need to work with this CSS so you will run into them if you do web development and um, today we're just going to work on a really basic table because um, you need to know it in order to create a, a contact form and that's how we're going to build this pretty much we're going to treat it like a contact form so um, the table has to be like body opens and closes so the browser knows when it opens and closes table same thing uh, the browser needs to know when to start drawing the table and when to finish drawing the table so we'll go to insert and you can do this in design view too but I really like working in code view to start out my table so I'll start out with a table and so that was insert and table and then I'm going to say that I want 10 rows for right now because I'm really not sure and um, I'll do two columns table with 100 percent well if you had a div or you had a section that has specific width in it already you could say 100 percent or in our case since we don't have that I'm going to say 500 pixels for my width in this case I'm going to give it a fixed width but you can do percent with this I am going to go with a border thickness of zero cell padding of zero cell spacing of zero okay and in this case since I am going to do a contact form where it's going to be like first name last name that sort of thing I am going to say that I do not want any headers however if you were presenting information and you did have headers like say you had the days of a week like a calendar you might uh, have just this top header row or in some cases you might have a left uh, a top header row and a left header row or just a left header, header row those actually are set up just a slight bit different than what we're doing here where um, where we don't really have a header I mean we could we could if we wanted to technically um, we could go and do insert since we are going to have one side presenting the data on the other side where the person fills it in we could do insert table and we could do this left one if we wanted to so well, why don't we do that we'll do that and that way it's probably more semantically correct because we are giving the left hand side the designation of header but still no spacing none of that alright so on the left hand side um, well let me just point out what we have here we have now on the left we have THs so THs by default are bold and are, and are centered so we'll have to style that out of there now on the right hand side we have TDs TDs are stand for table data TH on the left stands for table header and um, each set of TH and TD they are in their own TR which is stands for which stands for table row and they are within a table now you might have seen me just now as soon as I put data in here the right hand side got pushed way over I went ahead and I started to drag left and right and 
If we were doing a layout in here or a complex table, I would tell you that, say, we have a table that's 500 pixels wide, you would have to make sure that whatever you specified over here in width, like here it says 225, then you have to subtract your overall width and, and then uh, state that as your width over here. So 500 minus 225, we are left with 275. And you would have to put those widths in. They have to equal however wide your table is. Or you could do it in percentages if your table was a percentage-based table. So 50% over here, 50% over here, or 25% uh, over here, and 75% over here. Whatever the case may be, you do want to specify widths. So we're going to do that. And we see here, if I click in one cell, that it says width of 187. And the next cell doesn't say a width. So this is happening down here. Well, it turns out that you can't have unique widths per um, per cell. Like in, in, in Excel, think about it. You can't have this cell be a certain width, and then the next cell be a different width, and then the next cell be a different width. They, the, this column is one width. This column is another. Now, if we were getting more advanced with tables, um, you could nest a table, and I will not demonstrate that because most of you in 190 are going to do it, but you could nest a table in here that had two cells in it, one row, and then you could get you know, a different division over here, and that's where things start to get crazy with layout and that, but you might even need it for data, and if anyone who's watching this needs more information, just tell me and I'll tell you how to get more advanced with the tables than what I'm showing. The next thing I do when setting up a table is I select the whole thing and I choose left and I choose top. So if my data gets long, my, um, my cell gets long, it starts in the upper left and top. You say like over here, this is really long for some reason, but over here I'm starting with my left and top. Okay. So we're going to get rid of all that. Um, so I do that, and so they all have that spec of a horizontal of left and a vertical of top. If you wanted this side to be center, you could select it all and come down here and do a vertical of, of uh, sorry, of center. And that would put your data in the center to start out with. But I'm going to say left and top. If I have a reason to not do it that way, then I will um, change it. Now, if I want to merge cells, I can select two cells like so and go down here and click merge and then two cells become one so you can nest tables and you can merge cells you can merge them the way I just did you can also merge them like so just like in Excel so we don't you know it's very similar to how that works now um, what we're going to do is create a contact form in here and um, we'll just start out with uh, name. It's going to be very basic. Sometimes people want first name, last name. And let's see, how did you hear about us? And the message, um, what is your uh, question? Or Okay, and that's going to give us some different options over here when we put our form in, which will be in the next video. So um, we also have to have a row to put our submission button in. And um, we're going to save this. Now what I'd like to do is style this table a little bit. So um, I can do what you know what we're used to doing and I can target the different um, the different tags so I can say so I have given this a cell padding of zero the whole table and margin of zero and keep in mind you can't really specify margins in each one of these TDs but you can specify padding so when we entered the table we started out with a cell padding of zero and a cell spacing of zero and that's kind of like margin and padding and the problem with all this is if you if you say a cell padding of say 10 it'll do 10 pixels but it does it all the way around and what if you only want 10 pixels on your left or your right so that's why we'll do it through style sheets and maybe we want this side to be a different background color than this side and maybe we don't want this font to be bold so we're going to create a style and, and for the purposes of this demo only, I'm going to leave this all within this HTML file. 
So uh, we're going to start out with tag and th because remember on the left hand side we had um, ths and on the right hand side we had tds for our cells. So I'm going to say OK and I'm going to go to font weight of normal, apply, there we go. Uh, let's see, I'm not going to deal with font size or anything like that. Um, if it's a TH, since we have THs over here, I'm going to give that a background color of, of, a, of a darker gray. And I'm going to give it a font color of white. I don't think that's very legible, but that's what we're going to do, just for the sake of styling our table a little bit. And um, if there is a, let's see, a TH comma or a TD, I want it to have a, um, and we're going to say that maybe we're going to have more than one table on our site, so if it's in a class of contact form, so contact form for TA, you know, THs inside of something with a class of contact form, TDs inside, remember that little space right there, inside of something with a class of contact form, and I'm going to copy this. And if that's the case, then I'm going to, um, I'm going to give them top padding of 10 pixels and a right padding of 5 and a left padding of 5 and see what we get. And, oh, and I also need to apply that class to my table here. So I'm going to go into code view and give this table a class of contact form. And it knows that contact form is an option. Ah because it's in those styles. So now they have padding, though we still, let me look at that style. Oh, we did left, right, we didn't do anything for bottom. So let's do five pixels on the bottom. And maybe that's a bit much now for the top, so we'll do five that way. And then we've decided, nope, our right and left need more. Or maybe just our right does. No, I think our left does too. Do even more for that. And there we go. Okay. Yeah. So we've decided we like the way that that looks. And um, we're going to create a style for a, the um, table with a class of contact form. Because again, we're, we're doing this, we're giving the table a class, so there's no space in here, so that means, dot means uh, class, and with no space in between it and its tag, it means table with a class of contact form. And we're doing this because maybe we have other tables on our site, maybe we want them styled differently. So if that's the case, then you know you start giving things classes and we're going to give everything a font family of trebuchet let's apply that and a font size of 12 that's really really tiny and um, an overall color of, of a dark gray but of course this style here for TH is going to be um, more specific than um, than this rule here, I think. Hold on, we want it to be anyway. So to make this more specific, we want to make sure that that is still white. We are going to do dot contact form space, and we'll we'll get one more thing in here. Table. Okay. And font color of white. Let's make sure that that's actually. Yeah, that's working. Okay. So that's get that gets white. And that is the most specific one now. And then we have this rule here and lastly we have that one. So 
All right, so our form is set up the best it can be for the time being. In the next video, we'll go through putting in form elements. And right now, by the way, this is how it looks because we have no border on anything, so there's no um, there's no color. Oh, we want to do one other thing, sorry. We wanted to add in TD. We don't need this TR. Oh, that was my bad right there. Okay. And the background color is going to be a very light gray here. There we go, because we did that just to the TDs on the right. So now when we type, font still readable, save, and preview in Firefox. And there we go. All right, so next video, we're going to do form elements.